Hi there everyone, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I have kind of a long video for you, but it's actually three cards featuring the new Reveal Wheel die collection, brand new with the summer release. With that, we are gonna be using tons of new stamps and dies from the summer release to create these Reveal Wheel interactive cards. So we're gonna start with kind of, I'm gonna consider this more the basic card. We're gonna be using the insert from the Reveal Wheel, and then we'll move on to using some of the add-on products. So I've got some mermaid cardstock here, and this is this awesome little insert that goes right in that little tab there. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this the add-ons. There's a speech bubble, and then there is also this cute little sweetest flavor add-on, which makes the ice cream cone scoop. We're gonna use the basic one here. What I like to do is use a little post-it tape and hold it in place. And then we're gonna run that through the die cutting machine. And we're die cutting our whole background from some mermaid cardstock. I also cut two of these panels, one with the cutout, one without. And then we've got the interactive portion, the reveal wheel. And I'm gonna show you how to put these together. I'm just taking a basic brad if you, have been crafting for a while, you probably have one. Um, go ahead and temporarily adhere it together. On the side where the brad is, the prongs is gonna be the front. The side with the brad, I'm gonna put some foam adhesive squares. Go ahead and remove the backing from those. And then the great thing about the reveal wheel is it's got some little score lines and we wanna line those up with that window. And we just kind of need to shift that around and move it until it lines up perfectly with the window. It can be just a tiny bit tricky. Once you get the hang of it, it's really pretty easy. Now I went ahead and made a whole bunch of marks and things. I will actually show this more in depth in the next card just to help line it up. And I also stamped these greetings on there. Um, I did assemble the reveal wheel, which we I just showed you. Then it's really easy to just, you know, move those prongs, take that off and stamp it. The greetings all come from the new reveal wheel sentiments. And you can see that when you spin that around, it's going to reveal a different hello sentiment. Now, I don't wanna assemble the front panel quite yet because any stamping that I have to do, I want to do now. So I'm using a greeting from that Reveal Wheel Sentiment stamp set that's gonna say, just wanted to say, and then it's gonna say, hello, salut, all kinds of different um, hello greetings in different languages. And I also decided to do a really simple cloud background. These clouds are from Plain and Simple. They're just an outline cloud stamped with mermaid ink right over the background. This is gonna create a really nice, interesting background. There's not a lot going on in the upper part of this card other than the interactive element. And it's not super colorful or anything. So adding some interest in the top part of the card is just gonna kind of help balance it out. Now, something so awesome that Lawn Fawn has done for us is that the Reveal Wheel panel is actually the same size as the large stitched rectangle or the small stitched rectangle collection largest die from that collection. So it's going to be the exact same size, meaning if you wanna create some uh, borders or backgrounds or whatever it might be, it is the exact same size. It's gonna have the stitching around it, which is so fantastic. What we're gonna do is die cut a rectangle from some cilantro cardstock, and then go ahead and create a couple of borders with the stitched hillside borders to have grass down here along the bottom edge of this scene that we're building. I like to really start with the background and work my way out. Um, you could definitely you know, do your whole front panel first and then move on to your reveal wheel. For me, it all starts with the reveal wheel. And so I like to start there. Um, so I already knew I kind of wanted to do all these hello greetings. And here's just another look. Look how cute that is. I just love how this works. It's so, so cool, you guys. Now, because we've popped up the re reveal wheel, that's how it's going to move around. We need to pop up the front panel. 
and I'm using these scrapbook adhesives, foam adhesive squares. The small ones were perfect for that little um, element that the reveal wheel spins on, and the large ones are great for the rest of this panel. In fact, you're gonna see me use these for all three of my cards. You can use whatever foam adhesive you like. This just works really well for me. I love that they come in two sizes. Um, I tend to use a lot. I don't want any funky little areas where the card might dip down. So I go ahead and really cover that whole background with foam adhesive squares. I'm removing all of that background paper or the backing paper rather and then I can pop my panel in place because all that we really have left for the card is a little stamped greeting that tells the recipient that the, there's an interactive element that it's gonna turn, and then we need to add our super sweet, cute little critters from the Coaster Critters stamp set, which is a really fun kind of amusement park type of, of stamp set that was brand new for this summer release. So here is the whole reveal wheel element put together. I stamped all of my little critters and uh, roller coasters and everything off camera and then I'm gonna color them. I have sped through this. I did leave the coloring in for the majority, I believe, of all three cards. It's part of the reason the video's a little bit longer today, so you can definitely kind of speed through this part if you don't want to watch it. I know I have a lot of uh, viewers who enjoy seeing kind of what's going on, what I've colored, and so I did leave that in for those who enjoy that. But you can kind of just speed the video up a little bit or move up a little bit in the video to go on to the next card if you want to. I have listed the colors of Copic markers I'm using for this first card um, along the top of the screen. This is the only card I'm sharing today that I used Copic markers. My other two cards feature Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, and they also feature a few more um, kind of just taking it up a notch elements. Uh, this one featured cardstock background stamped colored die cut elements all put together mostly just showing how this reveal wheel works and giving you a nice overview of this um, awesome awesome new die collection my next two cards are each going to feature something a little different the next one's going to have all inked and colored elements plus a different shaped window and my last card is going to be um, not a greeting in the window, but something else. It's gonna feature those cute little ice cream scoops. These are super cute little critters. I couldn't pick, so I used the fox, bear, and bunny. We're gonna use the little ticket booth, the balloons, both the single balloon and the group of balloon uh, balloons, rather. Um, the roller coaster pieces, we want to use both of those because I think they're cute tucked behind the different hills and things. And then the two roller coasters themselves, the little cars. There's also a smaller car and then a little uh, row of cars. So you can definitely use anything you want. The, this larger one, you can tuck the little critters in, which I thought would be kind of cute on my card. So we'll have a couple of them riding this roller coaster. Once everything is all colored in, we're gonna take the coordinating coaster critters dies and die cut all of the elements. And then all that's left is putting this together. So we're gonna start with the larger roller coaster element. Kinda like to work from the background up. Got both of these and I'm just tucking them a little bit underneath that greenery down along the bottom edge of the card. We've got our roller coasters themselves that we're gonna pop in place. And don't forget to add your critter, which I almost forgot there. I am using some bling glue dots to attach these smaller pieces. This is my favorite way to attach anything small on a card. They're nice and small, super sticky. If I'm not totally committed 
to using a liquid adhesive because liquid adhesive, of course, is going to tear your project if you try to pull it off later. Um, I will use these. They could still tear your project. I won't say that they won't, but it is a little bit easier to maybe move things if you need to, which you just saw me do there. Then we're gonna add our ticket booth kind of in the foreground. We'll add our little bear holding a group of balloons right by the ticket booth. Put the single balloon then. The little fox is going to be holding as he's going down the roller coaster. So now we can take this whole panel and attach it to a white top fold card base. And then, as I was mentioning, the Reveal Wheel Sentiments has these awesome little greetings that say, turn me, there's an arrow, or turn the wheel, turn here, that gives the recipient an idea that there's an interactive element and that you need to turn this. So I stamp that right there in that little spot. I'm gonna take a black glaze pen, add detail to eyes and noses on my critters. So, so cute. I'm gonna go ahead and put some adhesive here on my card. Put my panel in place, fold that in half, score it with a bone folder. And that is going to finish up this super fun interactive card featuring the reveal wheel and coaster critters. Next, this is the inked background that I was talking about, also featuring reveal wheel, but this time instead of the a uh, little window that we used for the first card that comes with Reveal Wheel, we're going to use the Speech Bubble add-on for Reveal Wheel. So Lawn Fawn not only came out with Reveal Wheel, but they also released the Speech Bubble and Sweetest Flavor add-on. This is the Speech Bubble. Just like before, we're going to tape that in place and die cut this panel. I am die cutting the Reveal Wheel panel plus an extra rectangle. I need that rectangle to die cut some borders. Also brand new in the summer release are these awesome stitched wave borders. That is what we're gonna die cut from that solid rectangle. I will also die cut an additional reveal wheel panel without the window um, for the backer of my reveal wheel piece. So here's the little window that goes over that. So it die cuts the window perfectly, and then you can die cut the actual speech bubble frame from another piece of cardstock, which I'm gonna die cut from white cardstock. You could do from anything you want, but it really gives the illusion that it's a single piece, if that makes sense. Even though there's an interactive element going on with this, it looks like a speech bubble on my card, which I really appreciate and love. Right now we're working on getting all of those background elements and then we're gonna start building this awesome reveal wheel. And this time I'm gonna really take you through the steps for marking your reveal wheel. I find that I have better luck. Some people can probably eyeball it so easily, but for me, I have better luck if I really mark it all out. So I kind of do it in quadrants. For me, it's easiest to kind of you know, make a little line down the center, make another line um, up and down and then horizontal. And that gives me an idea of the four quadrants I have that I want to fill with sentiments. From there, I make a little mark kind of in the center. This gives me an idea of where I want that greeting to hit. And then I'm going to grab my window. In fact, it's much easier to go ahead and put that whole little element together. Remember, it's super easy to pop off, so when we wanna customize it, again, I've got my brad. I'm going to back this little circle piece with my small foam adhesive squares. Don't get them on the reveal wheel itself. And then I'm gonna line up those score lines with my window. And I really kind of like to mess with it a lot flip it over and really flipping it over is going to help a lot you're not unfortunately I don't think I showed it very good right here in the screen but it needs to be pretty even at the top and the sides 
so that it works perfectly. You can also go by that nice little score line in the reveal wheel. This shows you a lot better. I'm gonna temporarily adhere it with a little uh, post-it tape remove the backing paper from my foam adhesive squares and go ahead and pop this in place on my reveal wheel backer. And just get rid of that post-it tape now. And now it's right where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead, leave it there for a minute and I'm just going to simply trace around those little X marks that I made with my pencil very lightly because I'm gonna to need to re um, erase this later but this helps me make sure that I get my greeting exactly where it needs to go. Um, it just is a little cheat. If you can eyeball it, that is awesome. I am just not good at eyeballing it at all. And so this really helps ensure that I get my greeting stamped right where they need to go. I went ahead and erased the little line, or the, pardon me, the little X in the center of each of those rectangles. And now I'm taking sentiments again from the awesome reveal wheel sentiment stamp set and this time we're using greetings that um just kind of say have a great day but we're going to combine them with the manatee rific greetings to really say some fun things so the greetings are going to read, have a super duper manatee-rific day. Have a really great manatee-rific day. Have a fun-filled manatee-rific day. And have a very happy manatee-rific day. This is a card that's going to work for lots of things. Um, I think it's really fun to try to find ways to mix and match my sentiments. So I worked really hard trying to figure out which group of greetings from the Reveal Wheel sentiments would work well with the manatee Riffic stamp set, and I really like this. So now I've got my greetings. I used a black ink here. Um, it's not a dye ink, I used a pigment ink. So I was super careful erasing. I could have heat set this as well so I wouldn't have to worry about it quite so much or even sprinkled on clear embossing powder and heat set it. But I went ahead and I'm just very carefully with a Tombow Mono Eraser going around and erasing my pencil lines. This is gonna get rid of them. Um, you may have to go over some of the areas more than once if you got a little aggressive with your pencil like I did, but I'm just being really careful going around erasing all of those lines. And you probably wouldn't have to do quite as much with your pencil if you don't want to. It's really kind of just up to you. So I kind of blew that off off camera to see what else I needed to erase. And then I'll just continue to clean this up and make sure it's all the way clean. I don't want to see those pencil lines at all. Now once I have that done, I can take my reveal wheel and put it back onto the backer portion of my card and then I can move on to working on the front panel of the reveal wheel and this time we're going to do lots of inking and create a custom background. I really spent a lot of time erasing. I'm so sorry, you guys. I thought I cut some of that out, but apparently I didn't. No wonder this video is so long. Okay, so we're gonna pop that back in place. Look at that little reveal wheel, so cute. I love interactive cards, but sometimes I find them to be kind of more time consuming to create. This is one that I don't mind creating. I love these. Um, I would not tell you that if I didn't. I actually really do. I think the steps for creating it are really easy and very, very fun. It's a simple interactive element that is really, really clever. Just like my last card, I'm gonna have that little turn me greeting. I use the same one. It's probably my favorite, the little turn me that's going to the side with the arrow. Really, really cute. Okay, I'm gonna speed through my inking of my panel just to save a little bit of time here in the video. I started by putting down a layer of squeezed lemonade distress ink, then I inked through this raised stencil with the squeezed lemonade, and then finally with fossilized amber. 
Next, we're gonna take our stitched wave borders and we're gonna ink these up with shaded lilac and blueprint sketch distress oxide inks and then spritz them with water from a distress sprayer. I kind of been loving doing a little non-traditional uh, watercolor with purples instead of blues. Sometimes I get a little bit tired of the same old color combination, so I like to play with something else. Shaded Lilac and Blueprint Sketch is a favorite color combination, and so I use that for my card today. Plus, I really like the purples, or the purple blues, with the yellows of the sky. I think it's really pretty. Let's go ahead and adhere these wave borders along the bottom edge of our panel. There is our background. Now, before I attach this panel to the reveal wheel, which we have to do with foam adhesive, we need to make sure we add anything and stamp anything so that it's easy to adhere. Starting with that thought bubble or speech bubble window, the frame frames it up and is what makes it a speech bubble. I die cut that from white cardstock, glued that around the frame, and then I have the greetings that read have a this we're going to stamp with the fossilized amber ink i wanted the greetings to really match where i'm stamping them so have a is stamped in the yellow part of the card that is stamped with fossilized amber manatee rific day with the exclamation point is down in the purpley part of the card that's going to be stamped with blueprint sketch then we're going to grab our manatees some seaweed, a shell, bubbles, and a, the little flower I did do, I did that off camera, I added it later because I felt like I needed a little something else for my card. Um, so I grabbed those and stamped and colored those later on. But then we're gonna color these in with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I stamped these images on a scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock, which is what I used, um, if I forgot to mention that, that's what I use for the background of my reveal wheel with all the inking. Um, I'm using a scrap of that to stamp my images with VersaFine Onyx Black ink and then color these in. And the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers just blend like butter on this paper. So, so beautiful. I like to lay down my dark color first, then take my lighter color and blend that out for some nice shading. And I'm just gonna color these in, super speedy coloring, nothing very time consuming here. And then die cut those with the coordinating dies. We can go ahead and start putting it all together now. Once we have all of our elements, and I'm going to start with the manatees because they're kind of the focal point and I want them to kind of be close enough together that some little bubbles are coming up and it leads your eye up to the speech bubble that has the reveal wheel. So there's my two cute little manatees. The one on the right kind of has some eyelashes, so I kind of consider her the girl, and the one on the left is the boy. And in fact, we're gonna put a little flower on her head here in just a little bit. We're gonna add those little bubbles. They just have a little bit of haze blue, Zig Clean Color, Real Brush Marker on them, so very, very light. There's not a ton of color to those. We'll add our other two little images down near the bottom edge of the card. And then we can take our background and remove the backing paper or place our foam adhesive squares down, remove our backing paper and pop this panel in place, just like we did for the first card. And again, these are the scrapbook adhesives, foam adhesive squares. They do come in black and white. Um, I think I might be out of some the white small ones and so I just went ahead and used the black. You don't really see them. You can see them from the side. So normally on a lighter color card I'd probably use white ones but you're not going to see them through the the card panel at all. And then I just take off all those backing papers and then we just line it up perfectly. 
And this is always my favorite part with this reveal wheel is popping that panel in place and then playing with the reveal wheel to see what greeting comes up next. So here is my panel. And there is just spinning it around. Isn't that so cute? I just can't get enough of these, you guys. I think they're so much fun. So let's go ahead and put some adhesive on this and pop it onto our card base. We've already stamped the little interactive prompt on our card base. Leaves a nice border all the way around the card, which instantly kind of frames it up. And this is going to fit in your envelope, your standard A2 sized envelope, so perfectly. Um, anytime you don't have your foam adhesive going clear to the edge of the card is a good thing for me anyway, because it means that your card is still going to fit inside the envelope. Plus those scrapbook adhesive, foam adhesive squares are fantastic. They're not super high profile and I have had such great luck with them. Here are those little flowers that I was talking about. I'm just going to finish adding those to my card. I added some glossy accents to the bubbles to finish them off. And that will really finish up this Manatee-rific Reveal Wheel card. That's going to lead us into our final card today. Our first two cards have featured greetings that spin around and change. This last card is not gonna feature greetings, it's gonna feature different ice cream scoop colors and different little stamped faces, which um, is just a whole new level of cute and fun. Plus it's got all these wonderful little ice cream cones all over it. So again, this was die cut. I went ahead and just did not do that part on camera, but it was die cut with the sweetest flavor add-on instead of the reveal wheel one or the speech bubble. Then I stamped, or di pardon me, die cut the frame from some Bristol Smooth cardstock and I stamped the ice cream scoop from Sweetest Flavor on that. And that's what we're gonna use to frame up that little window on the card. Now the reveal wheel this time, I kind of sectioned it off in quadrants just like I did for the previous two cards but this time I am coloring in with a Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker and a water brush pen. Um, I did this because I really wanted a light wash of color and make sure and let it dry or heat set it between each color so you don't have your colors running together. I started with English Lavender and then I'm gonna move on to my next color which is the Green Shadow. I also only kept my color inside that score line so that the scalloped edge that shows as it um, the reveal wheel spins doesn't have color on it. I didn't want that color switching. Um, I wanted that nice clean white scalloped edge so I kept my color within that score line. Again, heating this up in between, um, adding each new color to dry the watercolor so I'm not gonna have any bleeding. Plus, I want it to be completely dry before I add any of the cute faces from Sweetest Flavor. Or I'm also gonna incorporate a couple of uh, faces from the Sweet Friends, which was previously released around Valentine's time of this year. That's because there's two faces with the Sweetest Flavor stamp set and I really wanted four different faces in each quadrant as it spins around. This is the Sugared Almond Pink and then we'll finish with Yellow. I kept it a really fresh kind of pastel type of color palette for my card today. And I just want those edges blended out nicely. You are going to see those as you spin it around before you, you switch colors. So I wanted it to be a really nice line, if that makes sense, in between each. Now once this is completely dry, I can start adding faces. 
but I want to make sure I get my face exactly where it needs to go on the card. And that's the tricky part. Since I've added color to this, I wanted to be really careful because I will have to erase a little line. So I'm just going to draw some very, very simple lines here on my card. And I'll show you that here in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and color in the front panel of my card with Cracked Pistachio Distress Oxide ink. Kind of an ombre effect of light to darker, where it's light up at the top and darker at the bottom. Spritz the whole panel with water from a Distress sprayer. Blot that dry, and then I wanna make sure this is completely dry as well. Now I'm gonna color in my little frame for the ice cream cone on the front of my reveal wheel panel with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers because I need to know how far down to start adding my sentiment on the front of my panel. I'm stamping my greetings from the Sweetest Flavor stamp set directly on the panel and embossing those. And if I stamp it too high, the ice cream cone itself will cover that up. So I went ahead and glued that in place first before stamping my greetings. And you can see how cute that's going to frame up that re little reveal wheel for this card. Now this card is not going to feature very many sentiments from the Reveal Wheel Sentiment stamp set. In fact, the only thing from it is going to be the turn here and the arrow. Everything else comes from the Sweetest Flavor stamp set. And we're going to go ahead and stack our greetings so they read, You're the Sweetest of All the Flavors. And then I'm going to stamp the You're the and Of All the Flavors first with a clear embossing powder and sprinkle on, or pardon, not clear embossing powder, clear embossing ink, sprinkle on white embossing powder so that those two lines of text are white embossed. Then the word sweetest, which I removed here, I used it just for spacing, I will replace that word and remove the other two and stamp that with the cracked pistachio ink I used to distress the background. Kind of a tone on tone thing, but because the cracked pistachio or the distress oxide inks in general are pigment based inks, you can emboss those as well because they stay wet longer. So I'm gonna stamp sweetest with cracked pistachio and emboss it with clear embossing powder so that it's nice and shiny like the rest of my greeting, but um, it's going to maintain that awesome color. I love doing this. I think it makes the text really fun to have it two-tone. So there's the front of our panel. Really simple. It would be very cute just like this if you did not want to add a whole bunch of extra things. I, of course, kind of went over the top and added loads of extra. Now I need to line this up as I was mentioning a second ago and I'm just going to temporarily kind of hold it in place with some post-it tape. I'm placing my foam adhesive squares on the little reveal wheel interactive element. We'll pop the backer in place. And this is going to help me figure out right where I need to line up the faces. So I spun it around, gave myself a good idea of what I need to do. And then I'm gonna take my pencil again and I'm drawing just tiny little lines at the top and the bottom. So I know my face needs to hit somewhere in between those two lines. Very, very light. And again, I can't um, reinforce enough. Make sure your paper's completely dry before you do your pencil lines, try to erase your pencil lines or stamp anything. Then in Sweetest Flavor, as I mentioned, there are two faces. We're going to use both of those, plus the cute little pink cheeks, which we're stamping with Ballet Slippers Distress, or pardon me, Ballet Slippers Dye Ink. And then we're just going to move around and keep adding faces to all four quadrants. And then add the little pink cheeks. 
Okay, so what's a cute little face without some adorable little pink cheeks? And then this is where, again, I took two faces from Sweet Friends and added these to the remaining two. One of my favorite faces that Lawn Fawn has done in several stamp sets is the little face with the tongue sticking out, mostly because I think it's so fun to color in the tongue. I also did not get this stamped very well, so I took a black pen and just traced over that to fix anything that maybe didn't get colored perfect or stamped perfectly the first time. And then here's our final cute little face, just the regular little happy face with some little pink cheeks. Then I'm gonna carefully erase my pencil lines because I don't want those to show. Make sure at the top and the bottom of each little face, just get rid of those. Color in the tongue with a red marker. And then I'm gonna pop that back in place on the backer of my reveal wheel. And then I wanted to see how it looked, so I went ahead and spun it around and checked out all four of those cute little faces. I was so excited. This is a really, really cute interactive element. Now I'm gonna take a black glaze pen and go over the eyes on all these little guys and then let this sit and completely dry. It will smudge if you try to put your reveal wheel on top, the front panel on top right away or try to touch it right away for that matter. So I set it aside and let it completely dry. Plus there were a couple little areas where I thought weren't quite as dark as they could be. So I took a black pen and fixed that. For this card, I am using Turn Here and the arrow from the Reveal Wheel Sentiments. Again, I think it's a good idea to show the recipient that there is some interactive element going on, so I love that there's those little prompts. And then we're going to take some Bristol Smooth cardstock and stamp the ice cream cone image from Sweetest Flavor several times, plus the little cherry several times, and color these in with Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And I'm gonna color, I think I colored most of these on camera. Again, ice cream cones are brown, light brown, and flesh color. Um, I started with the brown. I started blending out with the light brown and I wanted it to lighten up just, I didn't want it to be quite so dark. I liked these colors and the flesh color kind of helps lighten it really nicely. Then we'll start with the ice cream colors and I wanted those to match the colors I used for the reveal wheel. I'm gonna use sugared almond pink and peach pink for the pink ice cream scoops. In fact, I kind of forgot my peach pink, so I went back in with it, because I like to start with my dark, blend out with my light, and then I even took a water brush pen to lighten it out more. We're gonna do two of each color, even though the panel looks like I did way more. And how I achieved that was anything that hung over the edge of the reveal wheel panel, I trimmed off and found a space for it along the edges of the card so it looks really nice and full. The cherries were colored with the red Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker. The mint ice cream scoops, this is turquoise green and green shadow, one of my other favorite color combinations. The purple is this blue and shadow mauve in fact, all of the color combinations I'm using today are some of my all-time favorites. These are some of my favorite Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I love these, I use them a lot. Bright yellow and yellow. And it looks like I need to color one more mint ice cream scoop too. Then I'm gonna die cut all of these images with the Coordinating Sweetest Flavor dies. And that takes just 
a couple minutes because you have to die cut each one individually unless you have some kind of die cutter that will do that for you. I know there is a scan and cut I believe or something that will do that. I do it the old fashioned traditional way with my die or my little metal dies. And then we want to adhere these all over the panel like I mentioned. I did this off camera. It saved um, a ton of time because I knew the video was getting a little bit long. So I glued these all down. I added some Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard to the top of the ice cream scoops to give them a glittery finish. I used, or added some glossy accents to the cherries and then some Nouveau Crystal Drops in simply white or white gloss to finish it off. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me today and joining me for this Reveal Wheel Interactive Cards Three Ways video showcasing new stamps and dies from Lawn Fawn. The supplies I use to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies you might be interested in. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.